I got, I got two mics. All right, um, well, hopefully you've been enjoying Logan, so our backyard here at, at Utah State University. Um, just to give you some background, initially, uh, two of my collaborators, uh, the first one was um, Jim Barber. He was from University of Idaho. He retired uh, last year. And then we also had, um, oh, from UC Davis, uh, now I can't, he, he just passed away, unfortunately. Um, not, not Steve Orlaff, but we had Larry Godfrey. And so Larry Godfrey was another entomologist on the project, and so he passed away last year. So um, more recently, we've, we've added two new uh, collaborators, and so now we have Rachel Long from UC Davis and Eric Wenninger uh, from University of Idaho. Um, so they're, they're assisting with, with this project currently. Um, with Clover Curculio, we've had uh, kind of consequently with, uh, with some of the band with Furidan, we've started to see this uptick in um, pest species that are, that are soil dwelling where they become more pestiferous uh, just because they don't have that soil suppression from things like Furidan. And clover root curculia is one of those where the weevil are, is feeding above ground, but the larvae are feeding below ground. That's a damaging life stage, which is feeding on the root nodules, notching off lateral roots, scarring the root, uh, the main tap root. So the objectives of this project were to first determine uh, the phenology of this insect in the West. So some of this work had been done in the early uh, 1960s to the 1980s, uh, but nothing had been looked at in, in the West. We just wanted to confirm what was, was being seen then. Actually, we've had some differences from what has been seen in the East, particularly with oviposition or egg laying, uh, where we get more adults laying eggs in the late fall moving into the spring. This is really different from the East, where we get overwintering adults laying eggs eggs mostly in the springtime. And so this now allows us to, to focus on management according to the timings that we're finding here in, in Utah. Uh, but with my collaborators, we're also looking at Idaho and California as well to confirm what's going on in the West. For objective two of this project, we're now moving into evaluating host plant resistance for clover root curculio. I was happy to see that there's a Cornell group also doing this in the field, so I'd like to, to meet with you. Uh, one thing that's really challenging with clover root curculio is that um, it's hard to rear them. Uh, it's hard to take them through development and also work with them in the soil. And so we've, uh, Caitlin Rim is my graduate student, and so she put together the poster, and she's come up with this uh, soilless way of, of looking at alfalfa, different varieties, adding eggs into that system so that we can look at root nodule feeding, root feeding, uh, and being able to quantify that a little bit better. Uh, just some examples. So we were looking at root knot nematode uh, resistant varieties as one way to look at uh, whether or not that confers resistance to also this other root feeder in clover root curculio. Um, we're starting to look at, this is head capsule width as just an example, uh, but one of our varieties, it's not the one that's root knot nematode resistant, actually uh, shows some slowing of, of development of clover root curculio. And just to end, the third uh, objective that we have is to evaluate soil active pesticides against clover root curculio as well. And so uh, we have uh, both systemic insecticides that we're using that are already registered in alfalfa, but also looking at some entomopathogens uh, that we can use against clover root curculio since uh, their primary susceptible life stage is, is below ground. So I think I'm right on time, maybe. Any questions? Thanks.